My name's Tom Reed, and I'm the head of rigging for MPC. So essentially in rigging, we provide control systems for the animators so that we can pick up the models from modeling and give them the means to do the animation. For example, here we've got Shere Khan from the Jungle Book, and it's quite easy to go in and pick up any of these controls and then position them however you want them to so that you can get the performance that's needed. We do this on several different levels. We do this on a body level like this so that you can ha move the hands and the feet and, and so on. Um, we also do it on the facial level. So let me go in a minute and select the face rig and I can show you some of that. So here we've got a face rig and basically this has got a bunch of controls that drives blend shapes so that we can get different performance. So here you can see our muscle system, which uh, is simulating underneath the animation of the puppet. And using in-house tools, we can control the flex, the, the flex detection, the impact detection, and so on, and then run different parameters down through the, the rig. So here we can see a quick daily of a walk cycle on a pig, and we're looking at analyzing the different impacts and flexes that are going on through that character, which we can then fire blend shapes and, and different sort of surface effects with as well. So as well as something fairly standard like a human or a, a character, you know, that's um, a real life character, we also get to do some quite cool things like transformation sequences. So here, if I just show you something from Superman, we're working with animation to come up with cool controls and shapes so that when we're doing a crazy character transformation, we're giving the power to the animator to go and be able to uh, tailor in those different bespoke things. Other stuff that comes up that's a little bit more bespoke as well is something like a growing surface. So we've got to come up with ways of allowing geometries to grow, pass that through to lighting and so on. So it's quite a broad range of, of, of things. Lots of anatomy studies, lots of technical thinking things through, lots of dealing with how Maya and the computer does stuff, dealing with look dev when it comes to passing on primvars and, and working with texturing so that they can provide us any maps that we might need. Obviously working with the assets team and modeling to make sure that we've got the correct edge flow shapes, face shapes and so on. So it, it's, it's quite a central area of, of the pipeline dealing with all sorts of different departments. Our main input into rigging is the model from the assets team. That's the, the sort of the mesh that we, we pick up on and then we'll start laying out all of the anatomy and all of the joint structure so that we can then build up from the inside out, you know, the different levels that are needed and work out the control systems, whether it's IK, FK, spline based controls for animation, working with the animators to make sure that they've got the control that's needed. Rigging produce several different assets. We can produce the puppet rigs that we've seen, the body rig, body puppet rig, the facial rig and the rig bound. Rig bounds can have muscles, they don't have to have muscles. They can just be a straight skin cluster with some other deformers. We write an awful lot of our own deformers within rigging to help us improve speed and efficiency. We also provide rigs for the crowd team, so they require special assets that pipe into the Alice system. So they require their own rig skeleton and their own rig bound and then also an offset rig for turning their animation into um, from Alice into a, a keyframable um, animation that um, can be picked up by the by the keyframers. So there's quite a lot of, of different things that we we can output. We output various primvars within the geometry cache, which then can go through to the to the shading team and look dev and lighting, things like skin stretch or compression for doing dynamic wrinkles and stuff. And that's all stuff that we will work out within the rig, and we'll save that into the cache, and that will then follow through. We also pass data through to TechAnim. If they need to do a cloth simulation or maybe a little bit of a pose fix, that's easy for them to, to, to pick up and, and, and do as well. So, you know, various different outputs from rigging. One of the unique things about rigging is sort of the breadth of pipeline that you get to look at and also the breadth of the science and the real world. Are we making a car? Are we making a spaceship? Are we making a creature, a fantastical creature that needs lots of... If we would, you know, when we were doing the snake for Nagini for uh, Harry Potter, we were looking, reading papers on, on how they move, how real snakes move. So reading papers from, you know, Cambridge University on rectilinear motion, which is how pythons stalk their prey. We're, we're looking at anatomy, we're reading all sorts of different 
areas. So it's always quite interesting. I think that it's both a technical challenge. How do you get the computer to do what you want it to do? Understanding the maths a little bit, what a transform is, how IK works, how you can layer up different deformers. But also you've got to have an understanding or a, you know, uh, a curiosity about the real world so that you can try and bring those layers into the rigs that you make. So I think that it's, it's quite unique in that it's, it's, it's fairly central within the pipeline and that it's got such a broad range of, of areas of interest that are scientific and aesthetic. A lot of the work that we're doing recently to try and make things better for rigging and other departments is to try and make sure that we are working on approved assets as early as, or before really starting. Some characters need it more than others. Um, you know, there's design changes and so on, but, but it's very easy to spend a lot of days doing iterations or model updates or design changes, which obviously is a bit frustrating. One way that we try to get around this is we code up an awful lot. So an awful lot of our work is actually done in script editors programming. We can program in Mail and C++ and Python. We've got a whole set of rigging tools which are shared across all of the projects and all of the films. So we try and really optimize our workflows so that we're, tr we're trying to get better with quality, um, with developing new tools to do with quality control as well to make sure that our output is as good as it could be and as reliable as it could be. So that's something that we're really conscious of right now is trying to, to make sure that we're really efficient. That's also what we like from, from the teams in, in front of us is to make sure that everything is clear, make sure that everything is, is as it should be and, 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 and correct. Conceptually, rigging is taking a static 3D model and enabling it to be moved by an animator and then have the surface qualities, the skin of as realistic a you know, representation of the character as possible. We're aiming for photo real a lot of the time and, and that isn't just the, the texture and surface quality of the rendering, that's an awful lot to do with subtlety within the skin movement, muscle flexing and so on as well, skin sliding, that sort of thing. Really get to know the pipeline. It can be very intimidating at first, it's packages here, different streams there, and it can be easily overwhelming. But actually, once you get the concept of it in your mind, um, it really does start to pull together. And you, you start noticing where things are going and where the flow of data comes from and goes to, and why all of those decisions that have been made that have formed it are, are very useful. The reason we have streams is so that we're not constantly stepping on other people's toes in other departments. So we've got those, and then we've got a publish facility to make sure that we're only sending data down to the next department as, uh, as we want it to. A memorable shot that always sticks in my mind is when we were developing Voldemort's nose for Harry Potter 4. And being part of that team, they didn't quite know how they wanted it to look or how it was going to work, but we iterated over, you know, that how that was going to be designed, integrate it into the footage and, and I'd only been at the company a couple of years so it was, it was really interesting just to see how different parts of experience and pipeline could be come together. We made a custom pipeline for it and then obviously it's turned out to be quite you know, quite an iconic um, visual as well. So you know it's, it, for me it always, it always hangs in my head as one of those eureka moments. Right now, Jungle Book is extremely excited. I think the number of projects and the, the sort of all of rigging is here in London. We're a small team that are servicing up to 18 films at any one time. The breadth of what we're looking into is, is so extreme. You know, we're looking at digi doubles, we're looking at transformations, we're looking good. You know, talking characters, spaceships, we're looking at ways of improving technologies, making things faster. There's so much to look, look into and there's so much to learn still. One thing I would suggest to anyone out there looking to get into CG is to investigate the maths and the programming a little bit. I think it's it's really important to know that when you you know pick up a, a control on a character and wiggle it round, knowing a little bit about what's going on there, and certainly if you want to get into rigging, it really helps. Knowing a little bit about the code and the maths that's underlying just helps you become a better artist when you start using it. You know, it's behind behind the screen. All it's doing is a bit of maths and by just 
freeing that up a little bit in your mind, you will become a better artist. It's like mixing paints or making a new paintbrush. So I think don't be intimidated by that stuff. It's scary at first, but do get involved and get stuck in behind the scenes.